This is the Jamaica Information Service, the, the voice, voice of Jamaica. Jamaica. You're inside Jamaica Magazine. Encouraging the information flow, sharing the news and views you need to know. We are building an informed Jamaica every day. Listening, Listening to, to what, what you say. say. We are committed to providing our health workers with resources that they need to function. I think we have a tremendous amount of talent that can be seen in the products that we manufacture. Hello and welcome to this Thursday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Samantha Allen. Also in the news, agriculture continues to experience growth and Finance Minister reiterates government's commitment to low interest rates. Later on Issues and Answers, Ken Jones talks about his book on the life and legacy of the right excellent Sir Alexander Bustamante. Stick around with the news in detail after the break. When I look in the mirror, sadness looks back at me. Will my life go carelessly? But even with the sadness and fear, the word of peace I will share. I, I choose, choose peace. peace. I choose to live violence free. And now the news. An increase in animal farming, crop production and fishing paved the way for the agricultural sector's growth during the July to September period. That was revealed by the Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, during its quarterly press briefing yesterday. With the details, here's Andrea Chisholm. Within the goods producing industry, the agriculture industry continues to record increased value added. Welcoming news from the PIOJ's Acting Director General as Jamaica continues on the path to recovery from the global financial crisis. But there's more. Agriculture grew by 10%, due largely to the more favorable weather conditions experienced compared with the corresponding quarter last year when we had tropical storm Gustav in August. As well, the Ministry of Agriculture's Productivity Program, which encourages the production of selected crops, impacted positively on the sector. Here's a breakdown of what led to the overall 10% growth. There was an 18.2% increase in the overall production of domestic crops. Animal farming recorded upward movement of 8.2%. Meanwhile, fishing increased by 22.7%. On the downside, export crop production fell by 24.8% due to a decline in sugarcane production. Looking at the broader picture, the country still has a lot of ground to cover. The PIOJ estimates that for the July to September 2009 quarter, real GDP for the Jamaican economy declined by approximately 3.1%. That's partly due to a 50.4% decline in bauxite production, 4% negative growth in the manufacturing sector, and a decline of 5.8% in the construction industry. The PIOJ says four factors continue to hinder Jamaica's recovery from the global financial crisis. A weaker external demand for goods and services, tighter financing conditions, the fiscal deficit, and a decline in remittances. There's a ray of hope, however, from the pending agreement with the International Monetary Fund IMF. In the meantime, the consensus coming out of the Planning Institute's briefing is that every hand is needed on deck to help the country navigate its way through the economic recession. For JIS News, I'm Andrea Chisholm. Jamaica is still investment attractive, insists Industry Minister Carl Samuda. The minister says although the country is experiencing difficult economic times, Jamaica still has what it takes to attract meaningful investment. I think we have great offerings. I think we have uh, a tremendous amount of talent that can be seen in the products that we manufacture. 
He made the comment yesterday during a meeting with a contingent of UK-based investors. The group is in the island scoping out potential investment opportunities. Minister Samuda explained to the investors that the government is currently seeking to diversify the country's offerings by developing Jamaica's agro-processing industry. We feel that it offers the greatest opportunity for us to use primary, uh, our primary products uh, to add value to it and especially for export, both to satisfy the Jamaican market and the export community. The UK-based investors were invited by the Industry and Commerce Ministry. Minister Samuda says the visit was organized to improve the overall competitiveness of various industries. In related news, Finance Minister Audley Shaw says the need to enhance Jamaica's productive capacity can no longer be ignored. Minister Shaw made the point at a leadership conference of the Jamaica Association of Young Professionals yesterday. He says efforts to streamline and regenerate the productive economy need to be supported by low interest financing. In Jamaica, we will have to, among the many things we are going to have to have consensus on, one of them we must have consensus on is the need to have low interest rates in our country. Minister Shaw says high interest rates is one of the issues that have historically affected the country's ability to develop an investor-friendly climate. He says this is why government is determined to address the issue of high interest rates as a matter of priority. While the rest of the world is accepting single-digit interest rates, we feel that somehow we can continue in perpetuity with double-digit interest rates. It cannot continue. Some $300 million is expected to be saved in the health sector through the sourcing of cheaper drugs and other medical supplies. The disclosure was made by Minister of Health Rudyard Spencer. Minister Spencer also says numerous equipment needing minor repairs will be restored and put back into service. We will be doing an inventory shortly, which will start at the Kingston Public Hospital and we will carry out those repairs based on the inventory. We are committed to providing our health workers with resources that they need to function. All regional health authorities were asked to present a list of critical equipment immediately required. Minister Spencer says they should know the cost of the equipment by the end of this week. In the meantime, discussions are already underway with various entities to secure funding. The health minister was speaking at the midterm review of the 2007 to 2011 Government of Jamaica United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF country program. <laughs> The Broadleaf All Aid School in Manchester is the proud recipient of a new sanitary facility, courtesy of the bauxite alumina company Jamalco. The facility was constructed at a cost of $2 million. At the official handing over ceremony, Principal Pauline Wallace called on students to make full use of the facility and protect it for future generations. It is a gift to us, and it is one that should outlive our generation and be here for future generations. Let us demonstrate our appreciation by ensuring that these facilities are kept in immaculate condition and good working order. Manager of Corporate Services and Government Affairs at Jamalco, Leo Lambert, says the donation is in keeping with the company's tradition of giving back to the communities in which it operates. He says that despite the current economic crisis, Jamalco plans to increase expenditure for community outreach. Part of that new expenditure is the creation of a revolving loan scheme, a Jamalco Entrepreneurial Development Fund that is going to enable young persons in our host communities who are unemployed but who have brilliant business ideas to get the capital that they need to start their own businesses. Those were the stories making the news today. For more information, please visit our website at www.jis.gov.jm. Stay with us. Jamaica Magazine continues.